iPhone or Pixel. Honest feelings. You know, I've been using both of these devices, the Pixel and the iPhone series, for quite some time now, and I wanna share with you basically my feelings, how they've been working, what I think about them as an experienced user of both of them. And if you guys enjoy these types of videos, you might wanna consider being subscribed to see more of them. So let's begin with the first section, and that's how do they feel in the hand on the day-to-day? -day? Now we got the iPhone 10 here. We have the iPhone 8 Plus in red. We also have the Pixel 2 XL panda edition so we're going to talk about the plus series and the bigger version and then the smaller pixel 2 right here now of course these have glass these don't no wireless charging on the pixel 2s but you do have wireless charging on the iphone 10 has that mattered to me absolutely not I actually haven't used that at all really on these iphones since i've gotten them but that might matter to some people but how they feel on the day-to-day -day is well the iphone 10 Definitely feels like the $1,000 phone here. Premium stainless steel around the edges, glass on the rear and the front. I don't really like the camera hump, but definitely this phone feels more premium on the day-to-day. -day. However, what I do like to mention about the Pixel 2 XL and my experience using this thing and the Pixel 2 is that they feel more practical. They feel more functional on the day-to-day. -day. So if you want to use a phone and you don't want to worry about it cracking and dropping and maybe you can hold up a little bit better to everyday use without having to have a case on it, you could probably rock these without a case, just put a good screen protector on. You should be good with Pixel 2 XL or Pixel 2. You might like these phones. So these are more functional to me, more practical for work use and the day-to-day -day, whereas the iPhones are more pretty they're more you know they're gonna they're gonna just gonna feel better when it comes to that premium feel however they feel fragile and you almost always have to rock them in a case which is kind of sad considering that you want to see that red you want to see that iPhone 10 you know stainless steel design you want to see those things and then with that being said you're basically choosing here between you know glass design or or practicality premium or functional here but i definitely think the iphones look better but really who really looks at people's phones these days there's so many phones out there i don't think most people care what phone you're rocking these days but if you care about the looks of your phone in general i think you might like the iphone more but if you like functionality practicality you don't care so much about looks you want it to be functional and you don't want to worry about putting it in a case or it dropping here is where the pixel series should shine over the iPhone series. So that's how they feel in the hand and my honest feelings. Now talking about display quality, it was nice that Apple put an OLED display on the iPhone 10, and this thing is beautiful. It's very well calibrated. I think that it has really good sharpness and uh, it's just a really nice display here. You know, some people don't like the notch. I don't like it too much either, but if we get rid of the notch, we just look at the display itself. It's a really beautiful display here in the iPhone 10, very well calibrated and it's got very punchy colors. So I really, enjoyed that and i think uh, you will too now on the iphone 8 plus probably the worst here on the table i feel like now i know i'm gonna get some slack for that you know it's a really good lcd but it's lcd i like oled uh, personally over lcd lcd is an older technology it's a cheaper display quality and uh, it just doesn't look as good when it comes to the colors however you know if you have an issue with pwm which is post width modulation it basically means the display flickers this might be easier on the eye to read in certain conditions at nighttime if your eyes are used to a classic liquid crystal display. Now, going over into the Pixel series over here, the Pixel 2 XL has received a lot of heat for its, you know, less than stellar OLED display. And it's well-deserved because it isn't definitely looking anywhere near as good as the Samsung display. But ever since Google has put in the colors mode, the saturated part, now it's definitely maybe comparable to a Samsung of yesteryear, probably not the latest Samsung, but it's still good enough with this new saturated mode. And uh, that blue tint, a lot of people I think over blue that blue tint thing, you only see it when you're actually, who really looks at their phone on an angle? Like, are you doing it? Like, are you doing that every day? I don't think so. So the Pixel 2 XL to me has a better display than the iPhone 8 Plus, which some people will disagree with me, but you know, I, I just think that an OLED in general is better than an LCD display. Now, the Pixel 2, the small one over here, also I think has a better display than the iPhone 8 Plus or 8, those, you know, LCD panels from Apple. This is more of a Samsung, uh, you know, display here on the Pixel 2X or the smaller one. And it's not, you know, that much different than an iPhone 10, regardless of the fact that the iPhone 10 has a notch, but it is a little bit less better calibrated and it's not quite as, I would say, 
uh, sharp here because the iPhone 10 has a more sharp display than the Pixel 2. So this is like a slightly worse display than the iPhone 10, but it's still better than the Pixel 2 XL. So the small Pixel has a pretty good display, inky blacks, and to me, it's better than the 8 series of device. So when it comes to display, do you want popping colors? or if you put it in the natural settings, both of these don't really pop that much, then you're gonna want the Pixel 2. If you like a well calibrated display, a beautifully calibrated display, and I would say probably a little bit easier on the eyes, you might like the iPhone 8 Plus. If you really like probably one of the top displays you can get on any phone and kinda gives you a lot of attributes, it gives you punchy colors, it gives you true tone, natural color, and a really sharp resolution, you're gonna love the iPhone 10. One thing I don't like about the iPhone 10's display though is even though it's a beautiful display, it's quite small and a lot of applications still are not updated to fit here in the iPhone 10. Now this is gonna change soon as Apple's gonna require it as their new phones are gonna be bringing the notch, but even here on one of my favorite apps, uh, News Aggregator, Appy Geek, this application right here is still small. So. A lot of text looks tiny on the iPhone 10, even though you have that beautiful display. That's not the case on the Pixel 2 XL. It's not even the case on the iPhone 8 Plus. But both the iPhone 10 and the Pixel 2, the small one, these do look tiny on the display. So overall, that's how I feel about these displays. Now getting into software, this is iOS versus Android. We're not gonna go on a bunch about the software. You know what you're getting here. It's gonna come down to personal preference when it comes to this. This is running the latest iOS 11.3.1. It's going to 11.4 very shortly here. And we should be getting 12 by the end of this month, which I will cover. So you might wanna be subscribed for that as well. And the Pixel 2 runs the Google software. Now, what I've noticed on day to day is that, you know, customization, of course, always goes to Android. That's a win. For iOS, I really enjoyed the whole, like, just using it personally, like for iMessage and, you know, just a simple UI. So for personal use, I found the iPhone to be the better experience. For work and practical use, like when I just want to do, you know, work and stuff, I go to the Pixel because I use a lot of Google services, but that's me. You might be different. If you use a lot of Apple services like Apple Notes, Photos, and you only use Apple services to get your work done, then the Pixel 2 XL is going to be probably not for you. But a lot of people do use Google services, and that's why there's a ton of Google apps available on the iPhone. But let me tell you, none of them work as well as they do on Pixel. And that makes sense because why would Google make apps that work even better on a phone that's not even there? So if you like the Google apps, you're going to love the Pixel 2 series. If you do love, you know, using Apple apps, you're gonna love the iPhone series. So it comes down to personal preference. For me, the software is pretty much a tie. It just comes down to just that. Are you invested in the Apple ecosystem or the Google ecosystem? For me though, I think for work purposes, I think more people are using Google's apps because a lot of them are free. The Pixel 2 is a better phone to me. Now for personal use, you know, keeping in touch with your family, you know, a simple UI, I still think the iPhone is the win here. In terms of stability, I found the Pixel 2 XL to be a little bit more stable than iOS 11. It hasn't crashed nearly as much. As a matter of fact, I haven't had any crashes on this phone at all since I've purchased it and never restarted or anything like that. So great phone here in Pixel 2 XL when it comes to stability. Now getting onto their cameras, all of these phones have fantastic cameras. Dual camera on the back of the iPhone 10 gives you a telephoto lens, lets you go 2X on that camera. And let me tell you, the shots that you get on any of these phones are just gonna be fantastic. No matter what you're shooting, it's just gonna be a great experience altogether because they all shoot photos that can rival some point and shoot cameras of yesteryear. And most of the, the point and shoot cameras you can buy now are not that much better around the $400 price point. You really have to go up to something like an RX100, which is like $1,000 to get a better photo than these two. But I think the Pixel 2 XL is still better than the iPhones here when it comes to the photos because of its HDR processing. It does a better uh, job with the shadows and you know not overexposing things. It's just a little bit of a smarter camera and it does do the portrait mode just like the iPhone 10 when it comes to just having a single lens, it can still do portrait mode on the rear. So you can go over here and just hit this little hamburger menu and you have portrait mode right there. You have AR stickers. The iPhone 10 software I still like a lot. I think it's very simple, but 
you can argue that the Pixel 2 software is super simple as well. So if I had to pick one for camera, it's definitely gonna be either the Pixel 2 or the Pixel 2 XL. I think the iPhones are pretty great cameras for a phone. They have great video, but I think video and photo still looks better on these devices. The stabilization is the reason I gave video to the Pixel 2 series. Now, if you want that 4K 60, which is not necessary at this point, most people are not uploading in 4K 60, 4K 60, is a new thing, um, then you might want the iPhones. But that's something that is not necessary. A lot of videos are still shot in 1080. Most people upload in 1080, including myself here in 1080 60, and nobody really complains about that. So 4K 60 is a luxury feature. Is it needed? Potentially, potentially not, it's up to you. But if I was going for just camera alone, the Pixel 2 XL series and the Pixel 2 are the better cameras here. They're the easier point and shoot cameras of the two and the settings aren't buried like they are on the iPhone in the settings menu. So for camera, I'm going with the Pixel 2. Get on to the battery life between iPhone and Pixel, how I feel about these things. Now, battery life on the iPhone 10 has gotten so good over the usage. It's really good. You know, at, at first it wasn't great, but it's gotten better. And the battery life easily gets me through a day with the iPhone 10. Now, Pixel 2 XL is no chump either. This one can get through the day as well quite easily. I do think that the iPhone, if you do throw it on a ch fast charger, like an iPad charger, it does charge fast. But the Pixel 2 XL with its rapid charging charges even faster. So battery life to me is pretty much a draw. It just depends on you know how you use your phone. I think that uh, iPhone might be slightly worse if you're actually using it a lot throughout the day. A lot of the apps seem to drain a little bit more battery than the Pixel 2 XL. But if you're using Google apps on the Pixel 2 XL, they're not gonna drain that much battery at all. So it comes to those third party apps where I really see a battery drain on both of these. But I think it, when it comes to battery, whether you get an iPhone 10, an iPhone 8 Plus, Pixel 2, Pixel 2 XL, they're all gonna get you through the day. But out of all of these, the worst here was the smaller Pixel 2. This one just has a smaller battery. Doesn't last quite as long as any of these. So definitely, if you're going for the most battery on the Pixel side, get the 2 XL. If you're going for the most battery on this side, get the 8 Plus. It lasts a little bit longer than the 10. Now, talking about audio performance, all of these phones do have you know, stereo speakers on the front. So one at the top, one at the bottom. They're both, they're all gonna sound loud here. So let's go to my channel and let's just play something here. Uh, play here. No more. Uninstall that app, cause that app just sitting there so if you cover this up, you can see it still comes out the front. So good audio there. Now the Pixel 2 XL does fire from the front. So if we go to a video here, Audio is more directional. So it comes more out at you, but I found the Pixel 2 XL speakers aren't as loud as the iPhone 10. That's just my experience. Yours might differ, but I think if you want a better, you know, sound in terms of loudness and bass, I think the clarity is a little bit better on the iPhone. So I'd pick the iPhone here, but if you like directional audio, you'll like the Pixel 2 XL and 2 more. Now, when it comes to the call quality, a lot of people don't mention this, but I have to mention it here because these two phones right here have been disappointing. I don't know what it is, but the Pixel 2 and the Pixel 2 XL have disappointed me in the phone call quality. They don't sound quite as loud, and I had more people saying that they couldn't hear me when using these devices. So Google needs to step this up on their next phones. These two right here, on the other hand, have been fantastic. The iPhone 8 Plus and the iPhone 10 are great. And these iPhones had problems before, so Apple's had years to perfect this area. You know, the iPhone 4 and 4S series were some pretty bad phone call qualities, but these over here are not too great either on the Pixel 2 XL and Pixel 2. Now, don't, don't get me wrong. You can make phone calls. I just think you're gonna have people saying, I can't hear you a couple times using a Pixel 2. Over here, you're not gonna have that issue on these devices. So this round goes to the iPhone. If I want a better phone for a phone, I'm picking the iPhone here. Okay guys, so let's break it down here. What are you gonna get here? iPhone or Pixel? Here's my honest feelings. If you're gonna pick a phone for just personal use, I think most people be better served for the iPhone. But if you wanna use it for more work use and use more like Google apps to get work done, a lot of services are free on the Pixel series, including the Google Photos app that allows you to take photos and upload them in full resolution on limited storage. So I think the Pixel 2 XL is the better value here. The Pixel 2 is a pretty good value as well. Uh, it has thick bezels, so I don't think a lot of people are gonna enjoy this one. But this one right here has thick bezels as well. This is probably the toughest comparison and I wanna call them a tie, but I have to give it here to the iPhone, the iPhone 10 specifically because it just has you know a little bit more premium feel to it. It can run the Google apps, which 
don't run quite as good as the Pixel 2 series, but you got Google Assistant, you have all the Apple services, and you do get updates that are gonna go like five years versus three years. So I think at the end of the day, it'd be nice to have a Pixel 2 on the side of an iPhone for you know getting work purposes done. But for an all around phone, when you're paying 800 to 1000, I think the Pixel 2 just needs to up it a little bit in hardware before I can say it's better than an iPhone 10 here. So I think the Pixel 2 XL can beat iPhone if they up that hardware quality and make it feel a little bit more premium and they get maybe a dual lens on there because that was nice but when you go telephoto on the pixel 2 it produces a lot of noise but overall it's the iphone 10 still for the win here for me at this current point but that's only slightly so don't think that i'm just being biased here it's only only slightly i'm still going to use these on multiple days occasions over these phones doesn't mean that i'm totally on the side of this one i just think as an overall package you get Google apps and Apple apps here and a little bit better hardware quality. And that's enough to say it's a slightly better phone in the long term with the updates for five years versus three years over the Pixel 2 and 2XL. Anyway, those are my thoughts. What are your thoughts? Comment them down below. I'd love to chat with you about this one. Thank you all very much for watching. Nick here helping you to master your technology. Thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I'll catch you all in the next one and peace.